Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, we will look at DMVPN redundancy using DuoHub DuoCloud. When you implement DMVPN in the production, it is always recommended to have some form of redundancy built into your design, especially if you're, the DMVPN is the only form of WAN connectivity that you are using. With the DuoHub DuoCloud design, you have two hub routers, each of those uh, acting as a hub on a separate DMVPN cloud. So here with the orange line is the first cloud with uh, NHRP ID 1 and the blue, blue line represent the second cloud with the NHRP ID 2. On the spoke side, each spoke will have dual tunnel, one connect to each cloud and it will be running parallel EIGRP to the respective hubs. Now on the LAN side, with the switch one in the back that we have in the setup right here, there's a couple options that you can do. One is being uh, using an H, uh, HSRP or some form of first hop redundancy protocol, whether it's VRRP or GLBP, to provide the first hop gateway to the LAN uh, devices. But here we choose the another option, which is just doing or enabling routing between the router and the layer layer three switch in the back end. So it will be EIGRP running end to end. And the main benefit of doing this EIGRP between the route and the switch, so you don't have to rely on the NHRP timeout, which is by default 10 seconds for the failover to occur, as well as there's no need for you to do all the tracking uh, command to track the tunnel's status and make sure the failover is reliable. If you notice on our lab setup here, we have, a, well, we're using a switch one for our WAN connectivity between all the DMVPN routers, as well as using the same switch on the LAN side. And this is possible by the use of Verved or Verved Lite to be exact. So if you're not familiar with Verved, Verved basically allows you to create multiple logical routing domains in the same device. So here we have a verb called INET that provides the WAN connectivity. Just to show you how we have that, show IP route verb INET. And you can see all the connected subnets and shown in this physical topology here. At the same time, we basically use the verb default, which is no verb for our uh, test network, loopback one in the switch. So you can do show IP route without the verved option. Here you can see the loopback zero is on the verf. I'll try to create a separate video to explain about the verf or verf light. So you guys can understand it better if you don't have the background on that. Okay, so let's get started in the configuration here. Again, we're gonna create our config based on our previous uh, DMVPN labs, and I've already created a template for that. And so we can speed things up a little bit and just concentrate on the design side of things or the failover. So, so we start off R1 with R1, and here is the config. And let's go through that real quick. Just a tunnel interface config, nothing fancy here. We're just going to turn on redirect and shortcut right away with the HGRP and the crypto configuration. And that goes into R1. Okay, and for R1 we use network ID for NHRP number one, and then we also use key one for GRE. Now for R2, which is the second DMVPN cloud, we're gonna use tunnel number two with the separate IP subnet 192.168.2, and we choose a separate network ID number two, and then tunnel key two for GRE. Everything else is the same. Okay. 
Okay. So let's just make sure that R1 and R2 has the switch run in the back as the EIGRP. So let's take a look at our config real quick and see if we're missing something. Okay, let's make sure that our two can ping switch one. Okay, looks like R1 is not configured for the IP, so let's do that real quick. Fat01 IP address 172.16.22.252. No shot. Same thing here with uh, R2. Two dot two, uh, three dot two rather. Okay, now R1 EAGRP came up. Let's build us R2. Okay, now let's complete our DMVPN configuration on the spokes. R4. R4 is going to have two tunnels. So here's the config for R4. Tunnel 1, 1.4, network 1, key 1, and the mapping to the hub router R1. Okay, the second tunnel, number 2, with the IP address 2.4, the network ID 2, and key number 2, and an HRP static map to 2.1 on the router 2. Enable EHRP all over, and turn on IPsec. Again, if you're not familiar with these configurations, please check out our previous video on H NHRP and DMVPN. Now we're going to move on to router 5, so you can see EIGRP for both tunnels came up. Router 5 is going to be very similar to router 4. With the difference in IP, so 1.5 for cloud number one, key one, and 2.5 for cloud number two, key two. Everything else is pretty much the same, so. Okay, and the JRP came up. On R1, see two peers, R4, R5, and 1.4 and 1.5. Now 4, check the crypto tunnel, and there are two tunnels with R4 built to R1 and R2. To show IP route EIGRP, see R4 receives the R5 routes and the switch loopback zero routes equally with the equal matrix over tunnel 1 and tunnel 2. And we've seen the same on R5. And if we go to switch 1, it sits on the land side. It's learning R4 and R5 routes through R1 and R2, again with equal matrix. Okay, so if you do a ping, 172.16.0.1, so let's do back 0, which is the R1 
our switch one loopback interface, we can ping successfully. And if we ping 1.0.2.16.0.55.1, uh, can ping. Check the NHRP. You can see there's a dynamic entry now for R5, physical and logical interface. And show IP um, crypto, ISCAM SA, and there is a spoke to spoke tunnel built between R4 and R5. Just to look back on the uh, NHRP entry above, you can see it's pointing out tunnel 2. So for the particular traffic, which is between R4 loopback and R5 loopback, it happens to pick tunnel 2 to exit. And you can see, um, how, and that's because you have an equal, co equal cost path uh, routes. For the 16.55, it just happened to pick tunnel 2 for those uh, pair of source and destination IPs. Okay, so this may or may not, for the most for most of the time, is not what you want because of the unpredictab uh, unpredictability of the tra uh, traffic flow. What you want to do is pick one cloud as your primary and pick the other one as a backup. So in our case here, we're going to use the first the MVPN cloud or the orange one as the primary and the second as the backup. So there are several ways that you can do this. And you, you do this by controlling or manipulating routing metrics. If you understand EHRP, EHRP has five metrics that the router used to calculate the final metrics. Just a simple and I guess the simplest metrics that you can usually tweak without affecting the whole lots of other things is delay. So we look here at R4 and if you look at the tunnel interface 1 by default the tunnel interface has the 9k of bandwidth and that's about 500 millisecond of delay. So, so, so we can easily adjust the delay value on each of the tunnels interface in R4 and make R4 prefer one tunnel over the other. Okay, so the way to do that is you get under the tunnel interface and let's do delay command. And you can see the tens of a microsecond. If you do 10, that means it's 100 microseconds, so let's just do that. And for tunnel 2, if you want all the traffic to prefer tunnel 1, you need to make sure the delay on tunnel 2 is worse. So we can just do 11. Okay, we can do the same thing on R1. 10. Eleven. So now, if we do show IP route EAGRP, all the duplicate route that's gone that points out tunnel two. So we no longer have equal cost uh, path routes. Okay, so everything is pointing out tunnel ones, the R5 subnet, and the switch one loopback. Okay, but if you look at the EIGRP topology table, you can still see it still maintain the routes that's coming across the tunnel too. So when we do a failover test in a second, you will see how the router picks up the second or backup routes. Okay, we do show IP EIGRP topology, and let's just look at the R5 routes slash 24 and here it tells you it's still maintaining the routes coming from the two tunnels but it's just because the delay for tunnel 2 is worse than delay coming in from tunnel 1 let's just prefer the routes being learned through tunnel 1.
So you see here 55, 100, and here's 55, 110. Okay, so if you do your ping, or or trace, it picks the same path every time. And this is only between or outgoing of R4. Okay. You can see the second time the dynamic spoke to spoke tunnel is already built, so it's just one hop away. Now, if you look back at the switch one, switch ones do have equal cost routes in this routing table, so what we just did on R4 only took care of half of the problems. And that's just one direction from R4 to the other destination. It doesn't take care of the return traffic, so the traffic coming in from where there's R5. Or switch one, still going to have, actually R5, we took care of that already. So we do show IP route, EHRP. You can see it's prefer tunnel one to get back to R4. But for the switch one, right now it's an equal, it's an equal chance for switch one to pick router R1 or R2 to get to R4 or R5. So in order to fix that, and to have all the traffic prefer R1 or the MVPN cloud number one, you're just going to have to do something very similar to R4. Okay, there's some different options that you can do, a different way of doing this. The simplest option again is to adjust the metrics, delay metrics on EHGRP inbound to tunnel one and tunnel 2 of the R1 and R2 respectively. So here on R1 we can do tunnel 1 and then just put delay 10 and then on tunnel 2 not 3, let's delete that, um, tunnel 2 delay 11. So by doing that any routes being learned from the spoke the router will add the, the corresponding delay to those routes and the route will get advertised. Once it's advertised to switch one, switch one will see that it's actually a better route matrix coming from R1 than R2. So if you look at switch one, now the dupe again the duplicate routes is gone and it's preferring it's pointing out 011 which is the interface connected to R1. I have the trace route from switch one to let's say 44.1. So let's do back to zero. Let's see. Looks like the switch doesn't support that. Trace IP 16.44.1. Source address. Okay, so it choose 2.2, .2, which is R1, and then to R4. Okay. Other options you can do is you can add the delay command itself to the port fast 011 or 012 instead of putting on the tunnel interface, and that's just going to affect the routes being seen by switch 1. Or the other option is you can have a different two different EAGRP domain or autonomous system. So you can have, for example, right now we're using EAGRP one all over, but you can do that just for the DMVPN cloud and you can have a separate EAGRP AS number on the back end on the LAN side here. And on R1 and R2 you can do a redistribution and using route map as part of redistribution you can set the matrix value to whatever value you choose. You can do it that way too. Okay, now that we have those configured, let's test failover. So from R4 we're going to have a ping going. Repeat something large. And on R1 
tunnel one, we're going to shut that down to simulate failure. Okay, so ping is going, shut, jumping back to R4, it's timing out. Let's give it a few seconds. There you go, everything came back. Let me kill the ping. And if you do show IP route EAGRP, here all the routes are pointing out tunnel 2 as expected. Okay, so the question is why do we lose several pings? And that's because when you shut down tunnel 1, R4 on the other side has no idea that the peer has already gone. So you have to really wait for the EIGRP whole time to expire. As soon as the whole time expired, you lose the neighborship and R4 picks up the route from the that's being learned from tunnel two. Okay. And see now let's assume the R1 is currently down and now R4 needs to talk to R5. Okay. Trace. Now we have a single hop still. I need to show IP and HRP. Before you'll have two entries. And now we have additional entries. And that's because R4 can use R2, which is being a hub, to do the NHRP resolution. Okay, so even though R1 is already down, R2 acts as a backup uh, router for that. Just clear IP and HRP and bring up R1. And give it a second for everything to come back, including all the routings. Okay, EHRP came up already. Okay. Now we're back on tunnel one. Okay, we're going to do a ping again, but this time we're going to ping from R4 to R5. Loop back. And on R1, we're going to get ready with shut command. R4, ping. Oh, let's see. Not trace. Dip into ping. Okay, ping is going. Now we're going to shut down again R1 tunnel interface. Now you can see there's absolutely no ping drops. And that's because by the time R1 went down, R4 and R5 has already established the spoke to spoke tunnels. So there's no traffic going to R1 at all, and you can see now the EHRP just detected to be down. You can confirm with the additional entries in the HSRP table, as well as the uh, IPsec peer. Okay. That's it for our video. Thank you for watching Lavinus.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.